So you want to play around with the minimal 8-bit computer without going through the hassle of building it in real hardware? Well, you can do that right now. Today let's take a look at the minimal 8-bit emulator. And it's time to face reality, my friends. Breadboard computers are bad and emulators are better when it comes to writing and testing software for those minimalistic systems. Several times a program I'd written won't work on the real hardware. Not because I made a mistake, which I usually do, but because of a single wire that had come loose. Of course, this problem could be mitigated on a printed circuit board. But going cross-platform by using an emulator is a fun option too. Especially if you don't find it that enjoyable to cut all those wires. For me, exploring the hardware and also the software side is a highly rewarding experience. So I hope that you too get something out of all this. Here it is, a fully fledged standalone emulator of my minimal 8-bit computer, running in real time on a 64-bit Windows machine. It already has a little assembler built in, it's cycle exact and it's quite mature and stable now. I've used it to implement all my software and little games I've been showing off in my previous videos. The user interface is maybe a bit old school, but hey, I like it like that. You can download the emulator from my GitHub repository by clicking on the link in the video description or by going to the GitHub website directly. Just search for SLU4. Let's go through the download steps together and have a little unboxing video to see what's in the package. On GitHub just click on code, then click on download zip. I have extracted the zip archive to my desktop. Let's have a look. We have the KiCad schematics folder here and the standalone assembler. Next we see a couple of test programs, the microcode definition and here is the emulator itself as a monolithic executable. We have an opcode table and a readme file that gets you started with the emulator shortcuts. Let us double click on the emulator. Depending on your configuration you might see this warning screen pop up. If you still want to proceed, you will have to click on something like I know what I'm doing. Ah, first it seems you can't do anything with the system except for tabbing out with Alt Tab or closing it by pressing the AND key. But by hitting F1 you can toggle the emulator control panel and things are getting more interesting. We see a couple of familiar names here the PC, the MAR, A and B register and all control signals and even the garbage content of the first RAM page. The PC keyboard serves as both input device of the CPU and as a means to control the behavior of the emulator. Control commands start with the escape key. So escape and E erases all the memory as you can see and escape C clears the terminal screen. We have a clean screen now. Let us now load one of the example programs by typing escape L for load followed by the file name. Let's use chars.txt. Wow, something has happened here. Let's clear the terminal screen by pressing escape C and let's press F1 again to see the RAM content. There is a little program now waiting to be executed. Let us start it by pressing escape 1. Okay, now the CPU runs at 10 to the 1 Hz or 10 Hz. You can see the blinken lights, control signals and you should be seeing characters appearing on the terminal. We can toggle the control display on and off by pressing F1 here. Since this CPU can run at up to 1 MHz or 10 to the 6 Hz, let's walk our way up to Escape 6 now. So I'm pressing Escape 2 here. Now the system runs at 100 Hz. I'm pressing escape 3, 1000 Hz, escape 4, 10 kHz and escape 6, 1 MHz. Ok, let us clear the screen again and bring up our control panel. Now the clock is stopped and we can single step through uh, our instructions by pressing either escape H for a half step or escape S for a full step. On top you can see the control signals change. By pressing escape X we can make the clock halt after each new instruction fetch. So I am pressing escape X now 
and we see the out instruction, the increment instruction, branch on positive, out again, increment, branch on positive, and so on. Alright, by pressing F2 and F3, we can cycle through the memory pages. And we can also take a look at the memory page 7F00 and the stack pointer at 7FFF. Let's try and see the stack in action with a little subroutine that prints out hi. So let's load the example hi.txt and see what it does. First we initialize the stack here, then we call the subroutine sub and loop back again. And our subroutine down here outputs the characters hi and returns to our main loop. So back in our emulator let's load hi.txt by typing escape l hi.txt and hit enter. And this is it. Let us now single step through the program while we are taking a look at the stack memory at 7f00. At the bottom right you could see 7fff which is our stack pointer. So let's execute our first instruction. So that was ldi, fe, and this is going to be stored at our stack pointer which is now fe. Next we will execute the jump to subroutine. And as you can see, it has put uh, the address 06 on the stack. Down in the subroutine, we output the characters hi and return back to our main loop. Watch the stack pointer at the bottom right increment again from FC to FE. And now everything repeats. Let's toggle our control panel and hit escape F2. Taking a look at the stack again and as you can see data is processed on the stack memory. You can also see the program executing at address 0. Let's have it a bit slower. The bright spot always indicates where the program counter is pointing to. Okay, now it's up to you to give it a try and explore the possibilities of this little system yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Maybe you can come up with a cool little test program or a minigame. So far in this video series I've covered the major points of my minimal 8-bit CPU design so you can build it too. I still have some topics on my list but they may only be relevant to very few people. This is where I need a little help from you. Please let me know in the comments what topics or design aspects you are particularly interested in and would like to see them covered next. Your suggestions are really appreciated. And if you think I deserve it, please consider subscribing and leave me a thumbs up. Take care. Bye.